at the time that I really hated crypto, I stand by everything I said about crypto in 2017, except for one thing. Uh, I was wrong about Bitcoin going to zero. In today's video, Jordan Belfort aka The Wolf of Wall Street explains how to make massive money in Bitcoin, Ethereum and altcoins in the crypto market. Belfort discuss his current stance on cryptocurrencies, hedging against inflation with Bitcoin and his top tips for investing. At his peak with his stockbroker business, Jordan was making up to $50 million a year. Buying Ferraris with his bonus checks and today he charges up to $70,000 for a single speaking engagement. Before listening to him, please ensure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive into his last interview now. At the beginning, you were kind of hostile to the cryptocurrency sector. When did you change your position and why did you have this change of heart? So I, it wasn't an epiphany in one moment. Um, but I think the interesting thing is, you know, the way you phrased that was very fair. But sometimes people will be like, I can't believe you are once negative. I'm like, did you ever hear of changing your mind on new information? I mean, like living an empowered life is based on like seeing what's going on around you, seeing what's working, seeing what's not, seeing what things change and then constantly adapting and growing, right? At the time that I really hated crypto, I stand by everything I said about crypto in 2017, except for one thing. Uh, I was wrong about Bitcoin going to zero, but I didn't look closely enough because I just said, ah, it's a scam because it just seemed like that because of all the earmarkings of that. And, um, and what turned me was slowly but surely, number one, when it crashed, and it went down to $3,000. Like, it was still like a, a multi-billion dollar market. I'm like, wait a second. When things crash, they go like Luna, Terra. What US, that, that's what happens. They're supposed to go the way of UST. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing that made me start looking closely at it. Then a good friend of mine, a guy named Robert Beatles, a very, you know, early crypto adopter, gave me a very different view on Bitcoin. And that was digital gold. And I know a lot about how regulation works, especially in the United States. My original thesis was sovereign risk, that the US will just say no, no more. Like China did. And that was the real thing that was driving me to be really bearish on Bitcoin. So once I started making enough inroads, like this is no way there are certain U.S. senators that were getting behind it. Um, there was just too much into the mainstream institutions. I said that risk is pretty much over. They'll regulate, they'll tax it. But I think that's a good thing, not a bad thing. You mentioned our Bitcoin is digital gold and like a long term store of value. Where would you place it? Like basically, we all want to hedge against inflation. Would you back gold or would you back Bitcoin? I think the issue right now is you have to look at Bitcoin and and not take a 12 month or 24 month horizon. Uh, I think I think if you get it, it, with reasonable luck, I think if you take a 24 month horizon, you'll almost certainly make money. Maybe not. But I think if you take a three, four, five year horizon, I, I would be shocked if you didn't make money because the underlying fundamentals, I believe, are really strong. And I just think it's a matter of time that, you know, where enough of it gets into the right hands, there's a limited supply. And as inflation does keep going and going and going, at some point in time, there'll be enough maturity with Bitcoin where it starts to trade more like a store of value and less like a growth stock. It's almost like it's correlating, only it's when the Nasdaq goes down 3%, Bitcoin goes down 30%. It's kind of got like a manic depressive correlation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I get it. But I, I again, I, I just, it makes sense to me. It doesn't surprise me even one bit that it's doing that. I, I think that the surprise would be if it was already trading as an inflation hedge. It's simply still very nascent. It's, you know, there's no real institutional ownership in bit, in Bitcoin. The institutional ownership is more like, you know, hot money hedge funds. It's not, you don't have a teacher's pension fund owning Bitcoin for a 10 year hedge. It's not like that yet. So I think that's the sort of money. And I think what that's going to take is regulation. When regulation comes into this, there is so much fraud right now in the blockchain world. It's nonsense. It's like, you know, for every deal, there's a thousand bad ones. And there's, and, and by there's some great ones too but you get but i just it needs regulation so, so you're pro-regulation very pro-regulation put it this way there's massive fraud in the stock market all the time it just is there's massive fraud there's trade there's fraud in trading there's fraud on nasdaq there's fraud on the new york stock exchange there's insider trading self-dealing front running all the order flow but but compared to the crypto world it's like not it's a 
gem stock market. <laughs> You'd be deluding yourself to think there's no fraud in the stock market. There is, but it's 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 palatable. It's enough that the average person who at least has some knowledge can get a decently, not the most fair shake, but a decently fair shake. In the crypto world, people get slaughtered. They're getting absolutely slaughtered on a daily basis because it's just like this. You, how could you have the regulation in such a huge market? It's, it's, it's weird. It's like, you know, you can go out and raise money and have no disclosure. Every time there's a situation where there's no disclosure, it always ends bad. It's not, it's not, it's not even crypto is the problem. It's the crypto's not the problem. It's just human beings are the problem. <laughs> we, we need to be regulated because if every single time it's not, it ends badly. Have you any advice to actually having the right, um, uh, you know, the right evaluation of what's the right project, what's the not whenever you're getting it right? Because you want to avoid scammers and rug pulls and all sorts. Sure. So I'm not as concerned with valuations within reason because everything's overvalued. <laughs> Everything is so ridiculously overvalued. Who's to say what's most overvalued? I'm most concerned with the people behind the project. That to me is like literally 95% of it. Because even if the idea is not that great, if they're great operators, they'll pivot to a better idea. They'll soon enough figure that out and pivot. Versus if you have bad operators that don't have experience and don't know what they're doing, they'll take the best idea and f*** it up 100% of the time. You know, it's, it's very much like the dot-com bubble of... 99, 2000, you know, you watch like all of these companies just say bye bye. They, but the top 50 or a hundred, like they became the, the biggest country companies in the world. So I think that very similar thing is going to happen with blockchain. Um, and I think you have to look very closely at the management. You have to make sure that also I'm a big thing with people being doxxed. If you don't know who the owners are, that's like a really, really big thing for me. So, um, and, and then that's really a red flag and a half, right? And then also if there's no utility, meaning that the idea itself is far better being centralized. I, I would probably not get involved. Do you think that low cap cryptos, you know, they're like, you're looking at something that's maybe a couple of mil or even below that, those kind of cryptos that have got loads of room for maneuver. And if you're a small retail investor, you probably want to get in there early on those ones. Do you think they're the equivalent of penny stocks? And if so, because you've got like so much experience, you know, in the early days with penny stocks, is there any that you're sure. actually looking at at the moment? Well, uh, the thing is, so listen, I have this, there's two types of investments I make, right? One is the serious investments I make that I, you know, I'm really, I'm doing my research and I'm betting on the long-term fundamentals. And then there's some where I'll call, a friend will call me and I'll, I'll throw a hundred thousand dollars into anything if a friend tells me to throw it. Cause like, you know, it's like, well, I don't like to gamble on the track or I don't go to casinos anymore. So that's my sort of gambling money. I have a really funny story. So I put money into this, uh, into this deep DeFi protocol called Titano, right? And it did really well for a while. Then it crashed and the technology is great and everything. And I think it's going to come back, but that's an example of one that I would never say do it because like anything you put in there, you might, you just be prepared to lose it all. But yes, you're right with those ultra low cap deals. Wow. You get a hold of one of those things at the right time. You could make just massive, massive money. But on the flip side of that, you're, you're playing in someone else's playground. You know, you're not the house, they're the house, and you're coming in there and most of the time you're probably going to lose. I don't think there's any amount of research that you can do to protect yourself from these ultra low cap except getting in really, really early. Because it doesn't matter if they, if it's good management, bad, they're that low, what's going to end up happening? It's going to take its ride up and then when it gets to the top, people are going to dump it. And I'm not even saying a rug pull per se, just that the, they all have the same predictable cycle. They go up and once they crater, they seldom come back. So you have to get into these things right either the moment they come out and they, they're publicly trading on the decks. But better still is before that on either some of the launch platforms or even better on a series A or a seed round. If I'm an investor and I'm a crypto investor, retail, and I want to do a long term play, Number one, what do you think? Bitcoin. So number two. Ethereum. Number three. Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, number three is I, I can't one. go I can't go past them. I, I won't go past them because yeah. I, I just don't not not I would do it with like with privately with friends and stuff and speculate, but beyond Bitcoin and Ethereum, I, I honestly don't feel co confident enough. Um, I mean, Hedera, Hashgraph, I think I know the people that founded it. It's like a really solid tech. Uh, but I got, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I don't really, I wouldn't say, I don't really know. Oh, okay. Okay. I know. I mean, I think I know, but I, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm really confident with Bitcoin and Ethereum.